And welcome back to the Onyx Tavern Vlog series on Russia Sentai Tokyujer. Today we will be covering uh, Station Eleven, the Emperor of Darkness. And before I actually get into the, the episode, I just want to kind of reiterate something that's been kind of cropped up in the comments and some messages that I've been getting. When I watch the Tokyujer episodes and then do the Vlogs, I do it immediately after watching that single episode. So I do not watch the other episodes to get ahead, to see what's going on, or, or anything like that. So when I talk about the episode, I'm talking about it based on the context of just the episode that I am seeing and what has happened previously. So if you have watched ahead and you've seen more Tokyo episodes than I have, and something that I say is being contradicted later or is proven false, um, Please don't tell me. Uh, please, no spoilers uh, in the comment section or anything. The idea is that I want to give my gut reaction to something after I see it. And if I'm proven wrong later, then I can go back to these videos and just see, you know, what was I wrong about and why did I think that at that particular time. So, again, I'm not watching ahead. Yes, I am aware of certain things like, uh, you know, the Orange Ranger and the new uh, Russia and all that. But as far as plot developments and those details, um, I'm not looking into those. I'm trying not to go ahead and look ahead. And again, all my information is based on what I've just watched. So again, please no spoilers. And just keep in mind that again, uh, this is just from the, the viewing and nothing else. So with all that said, let's actually talk about Station Eleven, the Emperor of Darkness. I really like this episode because stuff is happening. We've had too many episodes where nothing has really happened, nothing has advanced the story, the plot, the characters, anything like that. It's been a lot of filler episodes, to be quite honest. So this episode introduces us to Zet, the Emperor of Darkness, as the title would apply. Um, what's actually interesting about this episode is the way in which we are introduced to him. And I want to talk about his character um, first, because I think it's the most interesting thing. Because uh, the plot's pretty straightforward. Tokyo go to amusement park, um, the Emperor of Darkness arrives, and everybody fights, basically, is the, is the gist of it. Uh, of particular note, though, the events from Station 9 actually play into this episode. So when the Baron was, you know, doing his plan with all the women and all that darkness, his plan was to create a new route for the Emperor of Darkness to come in from the Realm of Darkness or wherever he is uh, exactly. So I like that continuity tie-in. Actually, what happened Station 9 is important now and leads into this particular plot. So while at the amusement park we find out that Zet, the Emperor of Darkness, uh, has gotten off and he is in the amusement park and he is just perplexed and amazed by all the light that he sees. Um, the term he keeps using throughout the entire episode is that everything is sparkling. Uh, the, uh, the, the rides are sparkling, the balloon is sparkling, the tokuja are sparkling, the, their mechas are sparkling. Everything is sparkling to him. And the thing is, when we first see him, he doesn't come off as evil. He comes off as, and we've seen this in fiction a number of times, that royal person who has been sheltered his entire life, and he finally gets out and sees the world for what it really is, and it kind of goes against what he has been taught his entire life. Because when Zet is out, he's really happy about what he sees. He says that he's lived in darkness his whole life, but he realizes when he goes out that everything is in the light, and that this is the age of light that they are in, not the age of darkness. He doesn't really seem to resent the darkness, but seems to realize that light is much more enjoyable, at least. Because what I like the, what the writers did with this character is that when he goes around the amusement park, he has a sense of awe and wonder and innocence about him, not unlike a child. And what's been the running theme with the Tokugers is that they are all perpetually children because of their lost memories. So Zet, even though he's lived his entire life, 
is experiencing this world as a child would. So we have this running theme, not only through the Tokyujur, but through the Emperor of Darkness of this entire uh, childlike innocence stage. And, and I really like that, and that kind of informs us to his character. Because again, he doesn't come off as evil, he almost seems to come off as it's a job, it's what he was supposed to go ahead and do, but he has real no, no real feelings towards what it is that he is doing. Now, of course, we, we find out a number of other things. He seems to be building a relationship with Wright. Wright kind of befriends him and, and helps him out. And through that, when we get to when we get to the reveal that he is the Emperor and the villains show up, uh, Zed comes in and defends Tokyo from being destroyed. And you know, he it's against what he wants. He wants to know more about them. He wants to kind of study them. That's That seems to be the, the thing that I'm getting uh, from this episode, is that he, he doesn't really... He is evil, but he doesn't want to be. And he looks at the Tokyo as... I'm not even going to say kindred spirits, but almost alike. Because he even makes the line, which I'm sure somewhere down the line is going to go ahead and pay off, where he talks about the Tokyo being consumed by darkness. Now, I like this line for a number of reasons. One, it's another uh, piece of the puzzle to what happened to the Tokyo. What does that mean that they've been consumed by the darkness? I I'd like to know um, what exactly happened to them and how he knows this, how he senses it. Now, obviously, there's no connection between him and Tokyo at this point. This is the actual first meeting. Otherwise, he'd say that they were familiar with each other. And I kind of like that the Emperor of Darkness is not tied into what has happened to the Tokyo. Maybe through his actions, but not through him personally. And, okay, so they've been consumed by our darkness. I, I like that it's another piece uh, to the puzzle right here. But the fact that he's maybe able to recognize something about them to where he does again, he doesn't want to go ahead and, and destroy them. He wants to, um, I don't know, befriend them in some way. Because here's my thought on, on Zet. I feel, based on what we've seen with the different factions here, we, we have the Baron, we have Madam, who, by the way, there's an interesting line that in, indicates that she may be married, and, and that will maybe come into play down the line. Just an interesting tidbit. But we see them kind of still fighting amongst each other, trying to please the Emperor and, and so forth and all that. And, and, and what I'm imagining is going to happen is that Zet is eventually going to turn away from the darkness and that the Baron, Madam, General Source, one of those people will take over and that he will be tossed aside because he's got this radical thinking. That's what I'm thinking is going to go ahead and happen. And I wouldn't be surprised, and you can tell me if I'm wrong once it happens, or, or whatever and all that, that he may end up being a Tokyo himself down the line. There are, there's a hint in the Diesel Rasha that there may be a 7th Tokyo. And I wouldn't be surprised if Zet may turn out to be that, because he's got the build-up, just from the start, of somebody who could turn from evil one day. And if he turns from evil... Given Sentai, he may have been an alternate hero, a to uh, another Tokyo during the Rainbow Line, whatever. But I think that it's kind of set up here that he doesn't really want to be evil. And I really like that um, about this character, that there is... I always like likable villains, and he seems very likable to me. And I think it's almost likable to where he is not going to be the true villain, that Schwartz, the Baron, or maybe some third party will eventually come in and take over uh, the villainous roles. That That's kind of what I'm thinking. And wouldn't it be ironic that the Emperor of Darkness uh, sparkles and becomes a Tokyo? I can really imagine him as, like, Tokyo White. J just saying, you know, as the white Tokyo. That would uh, that would be pretty cool. Um, okay. Also, this episode has a lot of padding in it. It seems to me that a lot of the carnival scenes were just excuses to get the cast on roller coasters and rides and... Um, not very good. It could have been devoted to more with Zet. I'm hoping we'll get more of him in the, the next st station and so forth. But I think you could have devoted more time to developing his character other than show the Tokyo's having fun. Uh, let's see. Uh, of course, at the end, two interesting things of note happen. Uh, Grita 
runs away because she doesn't want to marry the Emperor, so we'll find out what happens uh, to her eventually. And the Lamp Shadow, or Shadow Lamp, I forget exactly what you call it, did something to Kutrick where they cannot see the Rainbow Line. Now, of real importance here, the beam, if you actually watch the episode, affected all five Tokyujer, but Wright can still sh see the Shadow Line. So the question is, what did uh, Shadow Lamp do to the Tokyujers, and why is Wright not affected? That will obviously lead into the next episode, and we should get our answers um, right there. Um, just kind of an aesthetic note, so to go ahead and bring up, when the Emperor's train arrives at the station and they all greet him, it was very reminiscent of when Palpatine's shuttle arrived from Return of the Jedi. So I think that whoever was directing this episode probably took uh, visual cues from that, because it's a very similar scene, except Zet doesn't actually come out like Palpatine did. So really good uh, there as well. Um, well, that's, that's pretty much all I had to go ahead and say. Th this episode was heavy on plot, not too much on story. We're setting up this emperor... But we're not finding out too much of why he is evil, and maybe he may not be evil, but we see the dividing of the factions and, and how it seems like they want to use the Emperor, because it seems like he's a child Emperor and everybody wants to use him for his own, their own advantage, basically. And that may be exactly what happened. So I, I, do, I like this episode because, again, stuff happened we got some important tidbits that might pay off down the line and we're going to lead into the next episode directly from these events so whatever's going on here it, it is definitely going to go ahead and matter I, I think so again good episode let's go ahead and see uh what happens down the line let's see what happens to zed uh so far he's a breath of fresh air in the villain faction and i hope he stays around and and my favorite Sentai villain, I'll just say it, my favorite Sentai villain up to this point has been Ryo um, from, from uh, Giga Ranger, Ryo, Ryo and Melee. And it's because they were complex villains and they had shades of gray uh, to their characters. And I hope Zed is one of them. And typically when you get human-like characters, that's usually what happens. And so I'd like to see, again, something good uh, come of this because I can really see uh, Zet becoming a friend to the Tokyujer. So that's my prediction. Let's see if it happens. All right. Otherwise, thank you guys uh, for listening uh, to this vlog. Let's get to Station 12 and find out what happens. So have a good evening. And the tavern is now closed.